Along the coast, fields of barren black lava surround strips of green land. In Hawaii, they are known as kipuka. Tiny islands of life surrounded by lava flows of volcanic rock. Red hot lava flows downhill. So a kipuka is a spot of land that is untouched. Rave garden. What it means in today's world is that here we have the park surrounded by all of this development. Aerial views of parks. On the west side of the island of Hawaii, it is not just one park, but three. Cultural kipuka known as Kaloko Honoko Hau National Historical Park. On a map of Hawaii at the far west. Pu'ukohola Heiau National Historic Site. North on the Kohala Coast. And Pu'uhonuo Honaunau National Historical Park. Along the coast to the south. Connecting the three parks is another national park unit, the Alakahakai National Historic Trail. A native Hawaiian procession along the rocky trail. How do you care for these? what we call wahila'a, wahi kupuna, which means sacred places. Once they're gone, they're gone. Along the beach, towering carved wooden figures stand sentinel by a thatched roof structure. Words, na wahi panna, national parks of West Hawaii Island. At dawn, dim blue light rises on a high black stone wall. Pu'ukohola Heiau National Historic Site is a cultural kipuka that stands high above the Kohala coast. Established in 1972, this site preserves one of the last major heiau in the Hawaiian Islands. Crowds of celebrants in white robes and brightly colored garments gather at the base of the heiau. Every August at Pu'ukohola, we gather for an event called Ho'oku Ikahi, which means to unify as one. Lines of practitioners dancing. Ho'okuikahi, it's kind of our, like, our new year. Kapono ai molito. This is our celebratory prayer. Lines of practitioners. What we celebrate is a nation born and a nation alive. Up close, rising along a wall of interlocking rocks. Its foundation is a temple built stone by stone. Temple wall stretches up and out before us. They built a temple. Walls of the Heiau atop a hill. The last temple built for Hawaiian reasons. San Ka'ai. And that is Pu'ukuhola. Men form a human chain. The construction of Pu'ukuhola Heiau began in 1790. It was ordered by the man many considered our greatest warrior, Kamehameha. In just one year, some 10,000 men or more completed the massive heiau. This particular heiau, Pu'ukohola, was dedicated primarily as a luakini heiau, a human sacrificial heiau, a political heiau. Nicole Anakalea. It was a time of great conflict across all of our Hawaiian islands. A young man gazes out from the shore. Since his birth, it has been prophesied that Kamehameha will unify all of the islands. Now at night, before a flaming fire. As a young warrior, Kamehameha was given stewardship of our war god, Ku Kailimoku, or Ku. Back at the Heiau, the final stones are laid. Kamehameha dedicates Pu'ukohola to Ku. He hopes the Heiau gives him spiritual power to unify the Hawaiian Islands. As our gods required, Pu'ukohola Heiau is sanctified with the sacrifice of one of Kamehameha's foes. With the Heiau now sanctified, Kamehameha's fleet of war canoes head northward toward the other islands. In time, all are defeated or submit to Kamehameha. A painting depicts a fierce battle. In 1810, the Kingdom of Hawaii is established. Kamehameha becomes sole ruler and king. The king stands alone atop the heiau. He was the supreme commander. He's the lonely one. What he says will make his people live or die. 
And that is a very lonely place to be. For the next century, Pu'uku'ola Heiau was also a lonely place to be. A black and white photograph of the Heiau in ruins. By 1960, the temple had become a crumbling and largely forgotten relic of old Hawaii. A new fire, its windswept flames leaping high. But the flames that once fired Pu'uku'ola could never be extinguished. Another black and white photograph shows white-robed Hawaiians gathered at the base of the temple. In 1972, Congress proclaimed this sacred place as Pu'uku'ola Heiau National Historic Site. A third photograph shows a procession and witnessing crowd. Clouds stream by over the sunlit Heiau. A wooden tower stands before it. Today, Pu'uku'ola Heiau honors a place born of vision. Practitioners offer tributes. And sacrifice. It's a place that is living. It belongs to our people. It belongs to a great king that helped to begin this process of unification. Modern day chiefs offer their gifts. It allows you to be amongst all of these elements and understand those are the same elements that my ancestors stood in. A young king stands alone again atop the hill. The land rolls down far and wide below his feet to the sea. Now flying above another park, words, Kaloko Honokohau National Historical Park. At the same time Pu'uku'ola Heiau was becoming part of the National Park Service, another vahipana, or sacred place, was under siege. Waves crash on a stone wall. I think in a shudder, and I, I get angry when I consider what could have been. What could have been was the loss of one of Kamehameha's favorite fish ponds, a lokui'a named Kaloko. High above a pond with a long stone seawall. During the building boom of the 1960s and 70s, developers were planning to destroy our lokui'a at Kaloko. The landowner decided that whole pond could be a private cove. He could bring in sand he could remove the wall and build a hotel there. Fred Kiako Kalani Kachola. In the face of certain destruction of this sacred place, rose a spirit that refused to die. A girl with her family finds a small freshwater pool. Some 800 years ago, our kupuna came upon this rugged place where fresh water joins the sea. The water drips through her fingers now a school of yellow fish. The bounty of fresh water was surpassed by the resources found in the reefs offshore. The reef teems with fish. It was like, wow, look what the gods gave us. And with a little bit of our help and ingenuity, we can make it even better. What a gift we have. In the water, men pass rocks along the human chain. Just south of modern-day Koloko fish pond, our ancestors began building what would become known as Aiopio fish trap. Most of the work was all done by hand. Jesse Kaho'one holds up his hands. See them right here? These are the main tools of ancient Hawaii. A fishing net hits the water. At Aiopio and other fish ponds around the islands, Hawaiians developed fishing skills that became unparalleled in the Pacific. All of the fish ponds built by our ancestors were magnificent, but the one at Koloko was a monument to Hawaiian ingenuity. Here, they created a massive wall we called Kuapa. Men in hip deep water battled the waves to place rocks in the wall. The sea wall was built across a natural embayment. The kuapa would create a large pond where we could raise fish. 
the wall beside tranquil waters today. Coloco Fish Pond today is one of the largest seawalls in the state of Hawaii. It's 800 feet long and 40 feet wide, and when you go to the wall, you, you see how big it is. The fish pond enabled our kanaka to thrive at Koloko and Honokohau for hundreds of years. But as Hawaii changed, so did life here. Storm clouds gather. By 1900, most had abandoned our traditional ways along the fish ponds. In 1970, the kuapa at Koloko was a crumbling remnant of the great sea wall. The developer's plan for a grand resort seemed inevitable. Archival images show the ruins. What was at stake for them was, in a sense, the future. Hannah Springer. They could see how quickly the landscape was changing around them. How those things that were once so familiar, that were considered to be everlasting, were changing instantaneously, and they saw an opportunity here. The opportunity was for the lands of Koloko and Honokuhau to become a national park. In a determined effort to save this place, Congresswoman Patsy Mink appointed 14 Hawaiians to come up with a plan to save our vahipana. One of the kupuna on the commission was Fred Kachola. And so we said, OK, let's write a report and make recommendations that will tell Congress exactly what this place should be, how it can benefit Hawaiians. The commission recommended not just a national park, but a cultural park. They authored what is called the Spirit Report, in it, our kupuna wrote, the Hawaiians who first came to the area felt its presence in every rock and tree. In the gentle waters of the shallow bays. And in the trade winds that gently swept across the prehistoric lava flow. They touched the spirit and felt its mana. In 1978, Congress announced the formation of Koloko Honokohau National Historical Park. Located between Kailua Kona and the International Airport, Koloko Honokohau remains a cultural kipuka for Hawaiians. This is a very powerful place. And at a time like this, when is this you and the place? Fred stands atop the wall. When you can connect to the to the ocean, to the land, and feel feel the presence of the people who thoroughly enjoyed and thrived simple, beautiful surroundings. Words. Mahalo to members of the Honokahau Study Advisory Commission. Twenty-five miles down the Kona coast, in the Ahupua of Honaunau, is a site that many consider to be the most sacred in all of Hawaii. Puuhonua Honau now is dedicated to Lono, our god of life. Puuhonua Honau now is, is not just a, a look through a historical window. It's a door that you can open and you can walk through and, and it's, it's a living, thriving place that you can be totally immersed in our culture, in our, in our traditions, and, and our practices. 1762. That door takes you back centuries to a time when our island was at war. Hawaii was a paradise. Yeah. 
But they had territorial disputes and differences. They had some few fighting going on, a lot of bloodshed. Charles T. Hua. Next, a warrior runs through the brush. This warrior has been defeated in battle, but he is not yet ready to die. In pursuit are enemies who believe this high-ranking warrior has violated sacred laws called kapu. If you could make it to the Puuhunua, it's kind of like a safe house. His first attempt would be to get to the ocean. He reaches the sea. You know, when a warrior comes to those cliffs and he's, he's looking across Onanao Bay, looking into this refuge. He stands breathless by the shore. For the warrior, there is only one way to get there. He dives into the water. And then he swims for miles. Shane Okone Nelson. You know, you either give up and get killed, or you stay strong and, and you keep going. The warrior presses on, reaching Pu'uhonua Oho Nau Nau on the other side of the bay. Once he gets in the area, he knows where he has to be, and he is safe. Others come to his aid. For the warrior, it is a time of great confusion. They offer him a drink. He can't keep it down. Yet there are signs that Lono, our god of life, overlooks and protects this place. He gazes at a rainbow arching high over the trees. The Pu'uhonua as a sanctuary was this incredible place. Kahaka'io Ravenscraft. It was a place where those who were being persecuted under the Kapu laws could go and, and be freed of that persecution. And not only freed, but also rehabilitate themselves to become what their society needed them to be. The warrior sits with an elder. Inside the Pu'uhonua, our fallen warrior begins a spiritual odyssey. Guiding him is a priest we call Kahuna. The relationship between the kahuna and, and, and the warrior would be one of love. And sometimes even a disciplined kind of compassionate love. The two men stand by the shore. During the process, the kahuna would not only just be teaching as a teacher would teach someone in a classroom, but also setting an example. So the priests themselves had to exude what Apu Honua stood for. Now flying over the Pu'u Honua again. Projecting a shield of spiritual power throughout the Pu'u Honua is Haleo Keave. A tall, thatched, triangular structure by the shore. Built around 1600, this is our island's royal mausoleum. Carved wooden figures surround the temple. At one time, the Haleokiave Temple housed the bones of 23 chiefs. An eight-foot-tall wooden fence surrounds the temple. And that's what gave the place a spiritual power called mana. Surrounding Haleokiave are 12 carved images called ki'i. The wooden carvings guard the temple. The ki'i represent different aspects of lono, our god of life. The warrior stands before the temple. He gave people a second chance to life. And the chiefs at the time, they wanted to give people a second chance to life. The warrior walks with his kahuna. A second chance is what the Pu'uhonua is all about. The kahuna holds out his arm. For our warrior, the spiritual transformation is nearly complete. They lean in and hug. His enemies will no longer do him harm. They recognize and understand the transformative power of the Pu'u Honua. The warrior makes his solitary way across the rocks. Above the Pu'u Honua once again. For more than 200 years, 
Puhonluo Honau now served as a sanctuary on the Kona coast. In 1961, Congress established City of Refuge National Historical Park. The Park Service, along with Hawaiian craftsmen and artisans, began to bring Haleokiawe back to life. In the 1970s, this place once again became a Hawaiian place. A black and white photograph shows park staff. In 1978, it was renamed Pu'uhonua Honaunau National Historical Park. Celebrants offer gifts in a ceremony. For Hawaiians, it is once again a refuge. At Pu'uhonua Honaunau, we can honor Lono and openly practice our traditional ways. Connecting the Pu'uhonua with the other parks is the island of Hawaii's newest national park site. It is the Alakahakei National Historic Trail. Alakahakei means trail by the sea. I'll challenge you that you don't feel something. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of our ancestors walking that trail. We walk in their footsteps, literally. Established in the year 2000, the National Historic Trail begins near Mookini Heiau in the north and winds around the island for 175 miles. It hugs the coast of western Hawaii, passing through three national park sites. The trail connects all three parks. The trail continues south, twisting around Kalai, South Point. From Kalai, the Alakahakai turns northeast, ending at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Modern day hikers enjoy the trail. The Alakahakai protects and preserves the ancient pathways that were critical to our people's existence. A group of ancestors walk the trail. The trails connected communities. They also connected our ancestors to the resources needed to survive. You could imagine that the trail was the lifeblood, the major artery, as it were. Kalani Susa. The Alakakai Trail, one could imagine, was the interstate highway of a complete gathering system. The trail beside a highway. But as Hawaii changed, so did our uses for the trail. In the wave of development of the 1960s and 70s, the coastal trail, with its spectacular views, was especially vulnerable. Arik Arakaki. In many places, the trail is totally developed over, covered up, bulldozed. Housing development along the shore. By the time the trail became part of the National Park Service, many critical sections had already been destroyed. Should our trails be lost, our connection to my kupuna, my ancestors, are severed. Kaleo Pike. We are losing that immediate connection to them. In Hawaii, we have a saying, e malama i ka'aina, care for the land. Volunteers clear the trail. In that spirit, the Alakahakai is partnering with communities to save what is left. It is the kind of aloha these national parks inspire. Fred Cachola strolls along the banks of the fish pond. Several fish jump out of the water. Today at Koloko Holokohau, fish are returning to our lokoi'a. So too are turtles, our honu. Shorebirds on sandy beach at sunrise. Along with endangered bird species. Here, the spirit of Koloko beats strong. The sun sets behind Hale Okiave. Pu'uhonua o honaunau is once again a refuge. 
the bones of our ancestors are no longer kept at Haleokiave, but the mana that was embedded in their bones fills ours. White-robed practitioners offer their gifts. Pu'ukohola Heiau has also become its own kind of refuge. For Hawaiians, it has become the very symbol of unification and lasting peace. Flying over each of the four parks. As our island grows, it is comforting to know these four national parks, cultural kipuka, are preserved and protected. All of these parks that you go to, they have a, an amazing connection to our people. It's something that, what we call po'e kanaka, those that are from this earth, those that are from these grounds, should tap into, to be able to offer their prayers, to be able to touch these rocks and understand that that energy is the energy of those hands and ancestors that have come before. A woman wades through a pond. The image shifts to a warrior in a red cape, standing alone atop Pu'ukohola Heyo. Words to our kupuna, manao i'o, mahalo, and aloha. Credits produced and directed by Chris Wheeler and Sunny Hutchison. Narrator, Kalena Silva. Music, Peter Cater. Words, mahalo to all the Hawaiian cultural practitioners, reenactors, volunteers, and park staff of the West Hawaii National Parks and Ala Kahakai Trail for their help in the making of this film. Great Divide Pictures, presented by the National Park Service, U.S. Department of the Interior, all rights reserved.